Hello and welcome to the last bonus episode review for The Wind in the Willows. Um, this one uh, is one of my all-time favourites and uh, it was on the, if you live in the UK, the WH Smith exclusive video. Um, it was the last one on there, Toad Filmmaker. Uh, being the last one, this of course was the last uh, episode ever transmitted uh, back in the year 1990. Um, they did do the special, A Tale of Two Toes, which I'm reviewing next week, uh, which will be the final, final, final review. Um, and according to various people who worked on the series, A Tale of Two Toes was the last one they made. So I think the production order was, um, they basically did the um, all 13 episodes of Oh Mr Toad first and then the special was made at the end or maybe slightly at the same time uh, but it was Tally Two Toes was transmitted first in 1989 uh, around Christmas time and then of course the series followed in 1990 so um, so there we go let's do it Toad Filmmaker so let's press play right now okay so this is uh, one of three episodes directed by Brian Little. The, other the others, of course, were Hip Hip Soiree and Happy Birthday. Um, I personally think this is his best of the three. Um, and uh, in many ways, it's nice that it's the kind of final episode. Um, he was, of course, the last director brought on. Uh, you still had Jackie Cockle doing a few episodes at this point. She, of course, did the special. Uh, and then, of course, you had Francis Foes who came on uh, to direct in it from series four. Uh, Chris Taylor had stepped away from it by the time series five came along, um, in terms of directing anyway. Um, so you had those three directors basically sharing the episodes. Um, what's interesting about for me personally about this opening is the date that Toad says. You'll notice that it's the 23rd of November. November the 23rd, as he says, my birthday. <laughs> um, Toad's birthday, is, of course, is the 28th of November, as we found out in the episode Happy Birthday. Now, I know a few people have said, oh, it's a shame that the series ended with this type of animation. Now, what I know what they mean by that. If you look at the animation of Toad here, it's not as crisp and polished as uh, a lot of the other episodes. Um, if you look at any Jackie Cockle episode, uh, particularly if you have Paul Berry animating, you've got a much more refined toad. And the uh, same can be said for the other characters as well. That's partly because of the types of puppets. I've said before, they've had different um, moulds for the puppets. And um, animator Stuart Sutcliffe confirmed that to me recently when I met with him. He was saying how the moulds were uh, slightly different, or the skins were, and the armatures were, one was a bit shorter. So you ended up with a bit of a different look and overall a different feel uh, to the actual animation when you were, when you were doing it. Um, and you can just tell when you look at Toad here, he's, he's not as crisp. And and then you've got animators who, don't get me wrong, they are very fine animators. Um, but they're just a bit different. I guess they might be more suited to other types of animation. But um, it's, still, it's still fun. It's still, it still works. And it's, it's got some great moments this episode. It's a good story. Um, and Toad's latest craze, as he's said here, is um, filmmaking. Um, which I can totally understand. I mean, it must have been really exciting to be able to make a film in Edwardian times. So the others being kind of stick in the months as they normally are. Um, I always find that animation of Mole's hand a little bit odd, the way he's patting the jam jar. That to me is an example of something that's overdone. It should have just been a pat like that, all fingers, not one finger full in the next. That's just me being overly critical of the animation. Um, <laughs> I like this, the way Toad's acting out, how you shoot the film. <laughs> yeah, so when I look at the animation, this is eyes that are quite odd a lot of the time. They don't always have a, f a focus. You know, they're looking randomly up and down and away over the place. <laughs> no, I like this. I do like this. <laughs> it's 
So it's, again, it's great acting there from David Jason and go because he's, what he's saying, he's trying to think of a reason for shouting. <laughs> Now it's interesting how they're saying, oh, need to get ready for the winter. And yeah, it's, for me, winter begins in November. I think that's the way I've arranged the episodes and everything. Um, for me, winter is November to... Um, oh no, sorry, I got that wrong. November is autumn, isn't it? Sorry, totally got that wrong. I think of November as winter because it's so dim and cold. <laughs> no, for me, winter is December to February. Um, so yes, it does work. <laughs> Ignore the thing I just said. <laughs> Now, my brother um, had this video, the one I mentioned, um, and I've mentioned before, he got that video at the same time I got the Lord Toad video. Um, I remember that day vividly. <laughs> and um, and this scene made, made my brother laugh. <laughs> the way he ratties and pictures the moon. That's it, like, like a tree. Now, I do like some of the animated moments like that with Toad nodding frequently like that. Absolutely fitting with the dialogue, of course, from David Jason. Um, now, I love the detail as well of the very old looking camera, isn't it? With the look kind of the wooden, wooden doors on it and hinges. And <laughs> now, this always looked threatening to me, the way it's shot. And it's just. A little bit odd the way Ratty gets this knife out. Like attention is drawn to it and there's like a build up to it. <laughs> and Ratty seems to understand how the film works and there's no communication of like, oh I need this I need this cut and he just cuts it. I like that. Ready to rehearse and then <laughs> Goes, oh, like that has the picture phase, almost like because the picture's faded. <laughs> kind of work. Now, Toe's eyes there are a bit odd as well. As I've said before, his eyes, if they're not focused, they just look strange. Now, some of these costumes, I think, are still around as well. Um, I don't know about Toe's outfit there, but certainly his hat is in the, the archive. Um, I like the earmuffs and that field mouse there. <laughs> now, that voice then for the hedgehog, I'm not totally sure, but I'm thinking it might be Francis Foes. I know he did a few voices towards the end, and even though he didn't direct this one, I assume he would have worked alongside Brian Little. Um, certainly in terms of I guess you could say training Brian Little up for directing. Um, but it did sound a bit like Francis Foes, and he's done, like I say, voices in his own episodes. <laughs> now, basically, most of the episode now takes place here um, in the grounds of Toad Hall. And this is one of those. Um, well, in terms of camera views, we can see, of course, the fountain there, which wasn't there at all in earlier episodes or earlier series, uh, but it's certainly a feature from Series 5, uh, throughout Series 5, and it's just a lovely feature to have in front of the, the hall. Um. <laughs> So they would have all been dressed especially all the kind of front been brought in and going even beyond beyond that to get all those angles for the house and back to the camera <laughs> so there's chaos already which is nice and you've got a lot of pace building up here in terms of 
Toad's redoing things over and over again and trying to get it right. But he does care, he cares about detail, he wants it to be as good as possible. <laughs> oh, I share his enthusiasm, I really do. <laughs> I love this. Now I do like the animation of Toad sign here. It's it's nicely done. Just that kind of he goes back and his upper lip sort of goes over his lower lip. So there are some nice moments, like I say. <laughs> That's a funny line. <laughs> I'd love to find out if that is Francis Toad. <laughs> now he knows he can't say snow. So he just says cold again. <laughs> now there's some great comedy value here. Can we go to the shop and no come <laughs> I love how Billy's very kind of, um, you know, he stands up to himself, doesn't he? He, kind of, he stands up to Toad. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Now that prop for the onions, I've, I've seen one or two of those props before, and uh, they're very heavy. I don't know what they're made of, but they, they weigh a lot. And uh, they, kind of a hangover from the film they were. Um, I guess they were learning a lot then, but it's common knowledge now that you should never make props heavy, or make them as light as you can, um, particularly if um, characters are going to be holding them. Um, I've had a lot of my students making props out of... Uh, balsa wood at the moment because it's such a light material you can make balsa wood look really detailed and really incredible and then you lift it up and it amazes you how light it is um, but of course it needs to be sturdy enough but I guess a lot of this you know if it's wooden props they would have used know, plywood MDF lightest woods they can but I don't think balsa would have been used so much in these days um, He's much more now. <laughs> oh, what is the matter with them? What are they doing? Hello. <laughs> 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 of course, the are up to no good, and even by this point, last episode, they still haven't learned, have they? <laughs> And half the events of a tale of two toes, you know, um, which is the ultimate thing that the Chief Weasel tries to do, the ultimate um, attack on Toad. Um, you know, you think he'd probably have learned his lesson by this point. But sometimes I think of a tale of two toes being better taking place after the Series 5 episodes. But of course, Series 5 opens with the, the Chief's return, um, which... You know, the weasels are already in, in jail because of the Tally Two Toads, but it's never quite worked for me because you wonder where that imposter toad ended up. <laughs> but you still need the weasels to be villainous, of course, for it to work. You know, if you can make a whole 13 part series and you've got villains in it, they've still got to get up to their old tricks. You can't reform them. <laughs> nice scenery there in the background there. You can see all the hills there. You can often see that, that far back. Of course it would have just been flat panels. But... <laughs> I can understand Toad's frustration here though, things just keep going wrong. <laughs> Stolen property to 
It was most lucky there then. He looked like he was. He wasn't there in that last shot with Bratty and Badger, and then he's suddenly there, I think. I like that. Good script writing there. Yeah, we get a really nice montage here with the, with the, one of the best themes I think from series five playing in the background. <laughs> in the background, totally wrong, going the wrong direction. <laughs> But you do, what, despite everything going wrong, as it always does for Toad, uh, you do get a sense of teamwork here, with everyone kind of chipping in. <laughs> and it's nice to see, you know, Ratty, Mole and Badger sort of there as well, and kind of everyone's sharing the experience. So it's nice. And you get the feeling that we can trust the weasels now. Um, they, they're just there for the fun of being part of the film. So. <laughs> but you wonder, I mean, this is November, so you wonder, you know, it must be very really cold. It would have been better, really, as a summer episode, I suppose. Now, this makes me laugh. Huh? So, just mucking about with Badger, pretending that he's put, <laughs> put white paint on one of the paintings, a painting that we've never seen in any other episode. Um, and this makes me wonder, maybe they wanted one, a regular one, but they couldn't find one in the shape of a screen. Because um, a lot of the paintings in total were portrait. Um. <laughs> They're a bit slow paced, this bit, I guess, it goes on a bit. Oh, they, I like Ratty getting ready with the piano there, actually. That's quite nice. Very fitting with the times, isn't it? Having live piano music to accompany some visuals. Um, but I'm kind of thinking, why didn't they just use... You know, how do they hang the sheet in the Yuletide Entertainment, which is way back, obviously, in Series 1. But, um, of course, Badgie put up his magic lantern, didn't he? Uh, but it's not as theatrical as it was then. We didn't have this, like, this big stage built or anything. He's just showing it on a side... Wall in Toad Hall, really, isn't it? I love the titles, and then of course we see all the things that have gone wrong. A little reminiscent of Toad Photographer, with his photographic efforts going terribly wrong, but it's not all bad though. Now you've got Billy Rabbit reading these, but just about here, you can't hear it very clearly, but Toad says, Billy, we can read, you know. Um, but the way Billy's reading them, it's almost as if, um, as if Toad had asked him to, you know? It's, you know. <laughs> but the, the music works, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's as though it's been well rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's weird, some of the footage we've seen already, um, so like when Toad was on the bike there, we had the side view and then the front view, which we assume was just a shot for us rather than for the camera, but it works, you know, they just stitched together this montage of specially shot footage. Now you had Toad having, having to go at Billy again for reading, so I don't know why. It's nice that Billy's narrating it. <laughs> Look at the henchman just marrying Toad and just... Now this is very kind of... How did my dad put it when he saw this once? Very um, poignant, I suppose, what Badger's saying here. Because what he's saying, he rings true. And I like the way Mole puts his hand on Badger's arm there. 
Why are Badger saying when we're gone, we'll be remembered by being preserved on a film like this? And it's very telling of the series itself. And then you've got the end, which is, of course, the end of the whole series. So when that was shown in 1990, just imagine the feeling you get, you know, if you've been with this series all the way through. Um, it's annoying that I don't remember seeing this on its trans first transmission, although I was aware of the Oh Mr. Toad series being on. Um, I'm much more a fan now than I was at that point, really. Um, but, yeah, very lovely ending and very poignant. Uh, and even more poignant when you think that Michael Warden died only five years later. Um, and he was the first to go. And then there was a quite a long gap between him and the next actor dying, um, which was uh, Ian Carmichael, I think, and then Richard Pearson, and then more recently Peter Salas. Um, so, yeah, beautiful ending that. And um, great episode. I think it's a really great episode. Um, not, not the best script I suppose and not the best animation um, but uh, some wonderful moments of course and delightfully funny in places and um, I do like it. I have fond memories of it of seeing it on that video when, we were, when my brother and I were growing up so um, yeah let me know what you think. Um, so there we are uh, that's the last of the episodes and we've just got the special to go a tale of two toes. Hard to believe really. Um, it's been quite a journey. Uh, like I said in, or hinted at in other uh, videos, I do have other plans for uh, further videos. Uh, I won't get into them straight away, uh, but in next week's review, I will talk a bit about what I'm kind of planning in the future. Uh, some of it will have will, will be to do with a lot of the merchandise that you can see behind me. I want to share that um, in more detail. Um, but also some other special items that I have in, uh, in another room and uh, an exciting book project that I've hopefully got coming up so it'd be great to kind of reveal more about that as we get near to it and uh, various other bits and pieces um, certainly in terms of uh, working with the archive hopefully more in the future and so on so um, so yes look forward to all that um, so do join me for that next week uh, a longer review of course because the Tality Toes is a special so it's um, nearly an hour long and uh, and that will finish the reviews so thank you so much for sticking with me with these um thanks for all the comments and i will get back to the ones i haven't applied to yet i promise i will do <laughs> i will get there um so thanks very much all the best and see you next week for that wonderful special tale of two toads cheers then